Hello and welcome to another girl chat with your girl Patricia and Evelyn. I know y'all, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, but we're not going to talk about it because we're here today and we're so happy to be here again. Definitely on a, a lighter, brighter <laughs> um, <laughs> topic. And we're excited about that. But y'all don't, you know, you guys already know we don't mind um, going deep, right? Right. But so, but today, um, we wanted to um, share our favorites with you all in almost all of our lives. It has always been a comment about um, something we have on that we're doing in our routine. And so uh, you guys said, hey, we want we want to know. We want to we want to hear you talk about it. So that's what this live is about. But first, I want to introduce Miss Evelyn. Yes, you know her as Evelyn Inc. or Chef Evelyn Online. She is a speaker, a business strategist, an entrepreneur, Instagrammer, YouTuber. She is all the things, y'all. Um, so definitely hit her up on her YouTube channel and follow her. Subscribe to her if you haven't already. Evelyn, it's good to be here yet again with you. <laughs> I'm excited for today. Yes. Yeah, so um, as always, you all, you guys can ask any question. We are going to start with beauty, but the floor is open. Hey, hey, we got Miss Carter in the house. Yes. Yes. Hey, welcome, you all. Welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for coming. So, yes, we're just going to share some of our favorites and you guys can ask us some some questions. That's how we're going to do it. Oh, we also do want to talk about the importance of just keeping yourself up, how you present yourself um, in the world and what that does for you and how it changes your environment. And um, I'm excited about it. How about you, Evelyn? I'm excited. So what's the first thing you want to share? Um, so do you want to go in like face steps? Like you want to start with like primer or or how do you you tell me how you want to do this you were the previous beauty guru so I'm just a small makeup enthusiast <laughs> okay so we could do I don't think I'm ready to do it like that but we could do it like that no no no, no. I, I like it if we're putting a face together what are the things we're most likely going to use yes. I like that Thank you. Thank you. Welcome G angel. So, okay. So let's start with the face. What, yes. what primer are you going to use? Let me, let me reach out. A lot of cocktailing going on today because I just, I like certain things. So for me, I like to start with, Oh Lord. See, this is why I'm not a beauty guru. This is the hourglass mineral veil primer. This is the small one. This is because I have oily skin, but then I like to come on top of it with the Too Faced Peachy Matte because it gives me like a blur. So these are my favorites. I used to be like a Rimmel Stay Matte girl and I still have that. I have the Becca uh, Matte, but girl, Becca make me tight in the face <laughs> if I use too much. But this is like more often, if you see me on camera, I'm using this cocktail. What about you? So for me, it is Becca Ever Matte <laughs> all the way. Thank you, Miss G Angel. Becca Evermat all the way. Um, your girl is oily. And what I do is I just take a little bit of it. Matter of fact, I have a new one. Let me not show the rinky dink one. Let me show the nice one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I concentrate it in the areas where I just glow <laughs> mm -hmm. and spread it out, kind of concentrate in this area and then kind of spread it out a little bit. Yes, it's tight in the beginning, but once my oils get to it, it mm -hmm. has that, you know, sort of fresh look, you know, and, um, yeah, I absolutely love it. I've been using this pretty exclusively now for maybe a year, but I love the hourglass one. That's like number the two hourglasses. Yes. But here's, I do like Becca. So if I'm going to be out and about for hours at a time, I put a Becca right in the center of my face. I'm sorry. I got to throw a lozenge, but mm -hmm. I'm putting it right in the center of my face and maybe a little bit on my chin cocktail with something else mm. but whole, whole face no <laughs> no <laughs> yeah I can't put it on my whole face either so, so what, your next step? what do you do next my next step actually is my brows and I know that's a thing oh. I actually do my brows next people are like do you do brows last but first 
my brows get done. Wow. First. How about you? I'm a foundation is next. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. And I didn't, let me, hold on. I got to grab my, found, my, um, my brow pencil. Hold on. Okay. While she's doing that, y'all. Um, so let's talk about just keeping yourself and taking care of yourself. And I know that it's tough right now with, um, you know, what's going on in the world and certain things not being open or hours being limited or, you know, they can't be more than one or two people in there at a time. But um, it really is important to keep yourself up and it, it gives you an air of confidence when you walk into any room, you know what I mean? And so I know for me, especially in the beginning, back in March, when all of this first started, it was, it was tough. A lot of things I was starting to do at home and some things fell by the wayside. I remember my brows were just <laughs> a mess. Mm-hmm. Um, but I realized after like a month or so, I'm like, girl, you got to get your, <laughs> you got to get yourself together. Cause I realized it's, it was starting to affect me too. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't feeling as great and as sexy and as fierce um, when I wasn't keeping myself up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, for women, I think as cliche as it sounds, when we look good, we feel good. Yeah. And when we feel good. We do good. Mm-hmm. And so I just realized like I've been on this whole, like cultivating my beauty thing this year, right? Like totally revamped my makeup collection. And the word that came to me about like why this was so important was like, it's congruency, meaning that I want to look on the outside the way I was feeling about myself on the inside. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it wasn't matching. Like, you know, I felt great about like, you know, all the inner work that I've done over the years and who I've grown into as a woman. And it wasn't always being reflected on the outside. And so I was like, you know what? Like, I wanted to be congruent inside and out, basically. Right. I wanted to look on the outside to myself, how I felt on the inside. So, I love that. I love that. Yes, brows. So for me, I do not have like a favorite product really that I use on my brows. Mm -hmm. Oop. (laughs) I do not have a favorite product that I use on my brows. (laughs) Sorry, y'all. Um, but what I can say is it's a certain type of product that I like, and it's like these little micro, um, pencils. Mm -hmm. I don't have a favorite. It doesn't matter what brand per se, but -hmm. this one right here is LA girls shady slim brow pencil. Mm -hmm. And, um, I have like a few of these. They're, they're cheap. And I think it's cause my brows, um, as you can see, they're, you know, they're, they thick. And so the micro brow, um, kind of helps me fill in where I feel like I need without making it look too much. Cause I feel like I'd be dancing that line a little bit. And so, uh, there's that. The other thing, actually, this is a favorite and this is the only one that I use. So I should, should say this, this is the NYX control freak eyebrow gel. And, um, so I do use that to make sure that they stay in place and they don't do their own thing. But they behave. And so basically, I call it like hairspray for your eyebrows. Eyebrow. Mm-hmm. It's so funny that you mentioned that because I was thinking about getting a brow gel. And I think we're the same when it comes to eyebrows. Like, I don't necessarily have a favorite. Eyebrows at all of my makeup steps are, is probably my struggle step if I had one. But I use the Milani Easy Brow. Like, y'all will see. You're going to see a lot of high end between me and Patricia. But some products is just like... I, I don't need a $35 brow pencil for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I use the Milani. Yeah, easy brow. It's fine. I tried like an elf one. It had a weird shape to it. I didn't like it. Um, but yeah, and I just recently started thinking about like holding my brows in place. Now I saw a makeup artist spray setting spray on a spoolie. Mm. Um, to brush through the brows. And I was like, oh, I'm going to try that. And I like that so much that I was like, I want to try a brow gel. Just like yesterday, I was like, I need to find me a good brow gel. But I was like, I don't necessarily need like Glossier boy brow. I mean, my brows are very sparse. Um, And so I was like, I do want like a tinted brow gel, but I don't want it to be too crazy. 
Um, and because I was using like dried out mascara sometimes just to kind of like show my hairs, like, Hey, there's hairs here. So yeah, this is, I mean, I've, and here's the thing. I don't even like change between brands. I just know that this works. And so Mm -hmm. it's just like, I'm not even about to experiment with a pencil. It's a pencil. So that's it for the brows. But you, I, I was looking at NYX and Troll Freak, and I was like, let me add that to my cart. So it's sitting in my cart. So now that I know that you like it, I'm just going to go with that. So Yeah, I like it. It's it's still soft enough to where I don't feel like my brows feel crunchy, mm-hmm. but it still stays in place. Mm-hmm. So oh, em, yeah. Emma Elizabeth says, I haven't worn makeup since the pandemic. How do you ladies wear makeup while having to wear masks? So I know for me this has been a thing really. And, um, what's great though, is I tend to wear products that I feel will stand the test of time because Mm -hmm. though I love the moments of applying makeup in the morning or in the beginning of the day, I don't like to reapply makeup. I'm not the type to walk around with like foundation and concealer and whatever. Once I put it on, I want it to last. So Mm -hmm. most of what I have leans toward leans towards long lasting but there are some changes that I feel like I've made that have really helped me with the mask situation Mm -hmm. I love lipstick it's like it's my thing you know what I mean um but I had started to lean more toward like your typical bullet lipstick that's matte but a comfortable matte Lately, I reverted back to my liquid lipsticks because I found that it doesn't rub up, rub off on the mask. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing that I've, one change that I've made, though it's not as comfortable as these lipsticks, they stand the test of time, you know, and I don't have to worry about them rubbing on the mask because there's little to no transfer. Um, And then when I take it off, I'm not, half my lipstick is gone. You know what I mean? So there's this little adjustments that I've made like that, that have helped, you know, me keep my lip on. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, it's two things. One, I, putting on makeup in the morning is like playtime for me. So it's like arts and crafts on my face. Right. Um, And so that's kind of my motivation. I think for me, I work from home, so I'm not in a mask often. I will say when I am in a mask, like Patricia said, I'm very oily. So I'm used to putting on products that are more long wearing, long lasting smudge proof type things. Um, like when we get to the foundation, like my foundation does not break down under a mask. I will say this. I, I am more of a lip gloss, um, lipstick in a bullet person than a liquid lipstick. I think I own maybe four liquid lipsticks total. So what I've been doing is like tinted balms, right? Where it's just like chapstick. If, if I know I'm going to have a mask on, um, it's just like chapstick that's going to give a little color. And even if some of the shine wears off, it just leaves my lips stained. So kind of similar to Patricia, it's not super transferring on the mask, um, but it's giving me a softer look. Because um, me, I don't know what it is. And I don't think that I have dry lips, but me and the liquid lipsticks, my lips be like, don't do me. Don't try me. Uh, <laughs> So I can do matte lipsticks, but the liquid lipsticks, my lips are just like, we will crust on you so fast. (laughs) So that's like, it's got to be a special occasion for me to bust out the liquid lipstick. I hear you. And for like the liquid lipstick for me has been something that I, I really had turned away from. I don't have that many, but I found myself like last week looking for them. I'm like, no, I need something that's not going to come off especially for date nights when I tend to wear colors like these mm-hmm. um, as opposed to like nudish colors that if they wear off, nobody will really notice. Um, right. But if a p- piece of your red is missing, <laughs> you're like, what, what happened here? What? And so, um, but I found myself looking for my liquid lipsticks. So right now in my Sephora cart are a bunch of liquid lipsticks just waiting mm-hmm. to be purchased. Yes. So what's what? up next? I for the sale, huh? I said I didn't even buy anything in the sale because uh, I just I was like I didn't already been buying this year. So. <laughs> okay, right. so I normally do brows after. Uh, well, no, I mean I normally do foundation after primer. So do you do foundation next after your brows? 
What do you do after your brows? Because I normally go primer, foundation, concealer brows. So it depends on <laughs> what I'm doing. So if I'm if I'm gonna do eyeshadow, mm -hmm. then I go ahead and do my eyeshadow first. I feel like I don't even know you. I know. <laughs> this is wrecking my heart. <laughs> like, it, let me tell you, when I be watching YouTubers do their brows and their eyeshadows first, it stresses me. <laughs> I be like, sis, how do you know it's going to work if you ain't got the canvas down? Anyway, go ahead. Here's the thing. I used to never be like that. I always did my foundation first, then went to my eyes. But after I started, you know, using more color on my eyes. Mm -hmm. and different textures, and some people got fallout and all of that. Um, I just prefer to have the freedom to wipe, you know, wow. if I need to. And so, yeah. Hey, Shantae. Okay. Welcome, welcome. Hey. So, yeah. So, you want to do foundation next? We can do foundation. Okay. Now, I'm not one of those people that have, like, 5,000 foundations in their collection. I have two. <laughs> I got two foundations and I cocktail. I used to not be a cocktailer until this one foundation came out this year and I had to have it. Okay. So I I'm old school and new school. So I cocktail Mac studio fix fluid with the Narsoft Mac. This combo on me, first of all, doesn't move. Okay. It be there. I, if I'm up till one, two o'clock, my face is still like, girl, we still in it with you. <laughs> does not fudge under my mask. Um, does increase on me. The finish is nice. Uh, and so I do a half, but I'm also not full coverage. I do a half, a half a drop of this and a half a pump of this. And that's my combo. What about you? Um, I am definitely not a combo person. <laughs> I stick with typically one one foundation, mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll show two though today, because um, my ultimate love bay boo um, that I will never leave. I don't think I can. I've tried, but I can't. And that is Miss Estee Lauder Double Wear herself. Ooh, with the fresh package. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> Sephora VIB sale. I'm telling you, I'm stocking up, okay? So, um, yes, I love her. She is so good to me. When I tell you, and I've used, uh, let me see. It's over here somewhere. Where is this NARS? Um, this one, like the one that you just showed right here. Yes, she's cute. She real cute. But um, I tend to get oily right around here with her. She'll break down around my nose. I know, I know, I know. But otherwise, I really, I really like. But and and slightly yellow for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I might. But I'm always Macau. And Macau, I always feel is slightly too yellow for me. Um, this is slightly too neutral for me. This color. But I like the finish so much. That's why I cocktail it with this. This is definitely more matte than this. Mm. I, mean, I mean, I've probably been using this since my 20s. Um, mm. But, yes. Yes, she cute, though. I, I'm yeah. definitely going to keep her. But um, I say a lot of double wear all day, every day. No matter where I'm going, I use less in the daytime. If I'm going out at night, I might use a little bit more. I absolutely love the not-too-yellow um, not too gray, but also not too red that it gives me. I think it's just a perfect color for me. But my new, like, you know, little thing on the side is this one right here, Makeup Forever's Matte uh, Velvet Skin. Mm -hmm. And um, I have the slightest bit of this on my face right now. Um, mm -hmm. And she cute. I really do like her. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really do like her. She is coverage full coverage. So I dial back, you know, with this because you can get all the way there. I remember the first time I wore it and because it's a squeezy tube, mm. I underestimated it. I just, in my mind, I'm thinking tinted moisturizer, but no, <laughs> definitely <laughs> not. So yeah, it's my girl on the side and this is, you know, this is, this is bae. Miss R2020 says, do you coordinate your mask color with your makeup look? No, I wear a black mask. Mm -hmm. 
I just that's it or disposable one mm-hmm. I haven't gotten there I mean listen the level of mask fashion has definitely <laughs> escalated for 2020 we've seen them in the stores people be coordinating with their outfit I'd be like girl I don't need a house that much um so I have a nice selection of just plain black masks and then I have my disposable masks which are also black and that's that for me what about you yeah no I don't I don't <laughs> I don't I might find one that agrees with my outfit a little bit more, but not necessarily my makeup look. Right. So whatever I end up putting on is whatever I end up putting on. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah. And G Angel says, OMG, I need the Menards one. Yes. It has a very good reputation. But I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, I mean, I don't know what kind of finish you like. I like a more medium coverage. She's full. The first time I put like a whole little squeeze, because again, it's a squeezy tube, right? I was like, oh, there's no lines there. You couldn't see my moles. You couldn't see my, I was like, oh, you're full, full. Like you're thick, thick. I was like, okay, let me dial you back. Cause I was looking full on, not cake face, but definitely like, oh, are you about to be on TV beat? Like Mm. it, it was so full. And I was like, oh, Evelyn likes to see her skin through the makeup. So I don't know why I'm also talking in third person, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what is the next step for you? So for me, after I put on foundation, it is brows. Okay. So, uh, so I do primer, foundation. No, I take that back. It's primer, foundation, concealer. And because I like to let my concealer sit a little bit before I spread it out, I put it on. And then I go for brows and then I come back and I spread out the concealer, clean up my brows, and then I go on with the rest of my face. Mm, okay. So that means concealer. Concealer. New face. <laughs> I got a new face. Oh, do you really? Please share. It, I mean, here's the, it gets so much hype and I was just kind of like, mm, I don't really know if I want to try it. You know what you say? The Elf Hydrating Camo Concealer. Mm. The color match for me. Mm-hmm. I know. Listen, I like a matte face. I'm just be honest. But at my age, I do not like crazy matte under the eye. So I got the um, the hydrating camo. But I, when I tell you, you need like a dot. Like you, know, you know how people do the full triangle. Don't do that with this. You will have a whole new face of foundation on. Um, so. I mean, I just, I've been trying this for a couple of weeks and I, I really, really like it. Like, I don't even want to go look for anything else right now. This is, this is it. What about you? Well, um, we have Miss <laughs> <laughs> Elf Camo Concealer. This is not the hydrating one though. Mm-hmm. This is the matte, you know, version of this, but, mm-hmm. um, yes, she is. I love it. I love it. Um, it definitely, it actually reminds me a lot of this concealer which is the other concealer that I use this is the Too Faced Born This Way Sculpting Concealer Mm -hmm. Um, it reminds me of of this stuff for the this is probably like more like the hydrating one okay and um, this is a little bit more matte than this but they were it reminds me of this the coverage is great Um, it goes on really smooth I don't find that this one even dries really fast for me Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and I found fi- I found that people who have oily skin still do like the hydrating one. So Which I'm just probably- afraid of everything that says hydrating. That's why I didn't go for it. But <laughs> yeah, I will say this: if I was, I'm not a like put foundation down the middle of my face person. If I was, I probably would go with the regular one. Mm-hmm. But because I'm just doing under eye, and here's the thing: I don't even really think I have like lots of wrinkles under my under eye but I'm just mindful that I've used some products in the past and by the time I put powder on it can it can age me a little bit so I was like "Mm, the rest of the face is gonna be super matte um so let me just get a little moisture right up in here so I love it and I think you put me onto this because I was looking for a concealer Mm -hmm. and I was trying all the little you know the little high-end ones and there's some good ones and then I was just like let me go ahead and try this and I was like girl yeah But a little goes a long way, ladies. Like, the doe foot will fill up on you. And if you put too much on, you'll have a whole new set of makeup on your face. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it's really good. It performs 
way better than its price is priced. Oh, so yeah. So um, if you guys haven't tried the e.l.f. Camo concealer, the hydrating, 16 hour hydrating, then definitely give that a try. Mm -hmm. You all were taking questions just to let you know anything and everything beauty related or not. Um, yes. But I want to point to some, I want to point out something that you mentioned earlier that really resonated with me. And that is making sure that um, you're living a congruent life. And so if you are a high quality, um, classy about your business, feminine woman, then how you present yourself in the world should also represent that, you know? And mm -hmm. so I think, you know, a lot of people fear, might fear, um, have fears about being superficial. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's not, you know, there's more to it. There definitely more is more to it than that. Um, it's not just about what you can gain um, or how you can manipulate the world, right? right? Um, but it's about representing yourself in the best way and with integrity. And part of with that integrity is being congruent, right? Mm -hmm. um, and making sure that you present yourself um, in, in, and it's the same way you feel on the inside, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would just add to that. There was an episode of the Cosby show a long, long time ago. And I can't remember what he was talking about, but he was talking about like creating this wonderful meal and saying like, um, I think one of the children had did something bad or brought somebody home in just not the best way. Right. And, um, you know, Cliff was like, it's like serving a steak dinner on a trash can lid. And for me, I think I realized that, you know, I had done all this inner work, you know, God had done such an inner work in me and my outer representation was robbing him of his glory. Mm. Like, let's, let's just go there. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it was like, if, 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 if I, if we all have these gifts that God has given us, but when people encounter it, it's this amazing meal, but it looks like it's on a garbage can lid. And I'm not saying people out here looking that rough like that, like, but this is just an example, right? That I was like, it doesn't come across as appetizing. But if you take that same meal, because the quality of the meal, the quality of your insides is still the same, and you present it well, then it will draw people to it and say, wow, I want to learn more about that person. And it, you could use that to witness, share your testimony, encourage somebody, something like that. So for me, I really felt like I was doing God a disservice. Like he made me and I wasn't cultivating. I wasn't upkeeping the house that he gave me to live in on the outside to the level that I knew I could mm -hmm. so that it represented the inside work that had been done and being congruent. And so it's interesting because I thought I felt fine, you know, like when I was just kind of being a lot more laid back and, 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 and less of who I really am. And then when I leaned into it, I was like, oh, I feel way more like myself. Mm. I mean, and for every woman, that level is different. But for me, it's like, you know, I really do enjoy, you know, putting myself together, you know, as my friend Yaya says, having all my details together and, I remember I was watching this video by Emily Noel and she was talking about like, you know, if you really enjoy makeup, like, you know, give yourself 10 extra minutes versus just rushing through it to get out the door. Like if you're not a person who feels like you have to wear makeup to go out to the outside world, but you just genuinely enjoy it. She was like, you know, make yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, take your time, like yeah. play with it. And I, I took her advice and it has just, I don't know. Like, so I just, I love that time for myself and mm -hmm. I've given myself like 15 extra minutes. I know everybody doesn't have that luxury and it just makes a world of difference. I don't feel rushed. I don't feel haggard. It's a fun time for me. It's play time for me. So anyway, I know I went down the rabbit hole, but that's just what I wanted to say about that. No, I love that. I love that. Miss R says, have you ladies discovered any new activities or hobbies during COVID? What about you, Patricia? Ah, uh, activities or hobbies. Let me see. I will say during the summer while it was warmer outside and um, I was less pregnant, <laughs> I used to, I picked up riding my bike again and I loved um, riding. My, my husband likes riding, but it's more of like a sport for him. 
for me, it was just fun and a yeah. really good way to exercise and just getting outside. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one that and we've talked about Patricia not really liking the mundaneness of like the gym. So something like a, uh, what do they call it? Like a little bike in the gym is just, I'm not going anywhere. I'm in one place and I'm doing all this work. I rather like see nature be outside and um, my environment is changing. To me, it's just a lot more fun and invigorating. So in the summer, I did a lot of that. Um, and then also, I definitely said, I think I think that I've picked up watching um, like Netflix series, particularly older ones. Mm. I'm not like a TV person. I don't like what's out right now, but I can appreciate some of those older shows. And so rewatching things like the fresh, fresh Prince of Bel-Air and girlfriends and, um, even older things like cartoons from when I was a kid, mm-hmm. um, like Rugrats on Hulu and all that. And all of these like older, older shows and just mm-hmm. kind of watching the show progress um, from when, you know, from the pilot all the way on and seeing how the characters like morphed as time went on. I find it very interesting now. So that's the other thing that I've picked up. I love that. I love that. So for me, I'm very similar to Patricia where I'm not a big fan of like going to the gym. Um, I think that, you know, exercise has been so kind of like, if you, if you don't go to the gym, I mean, like people use those phrases anonymously And I just decided I wanted to be into body movement. And so for me, something that I picked up during quarantine, which was great because I had a gym membership before and I was like forcing myself to go and dragging myself. And, you know, I just didn't really love it. Even the classes that tried to make it seem a little bit more, I was just like, it just felt like a chore. So what I picked up during quarantine is I do 30 minutes a dance a day. I love to dance. Like I love to dance. I, I was not on the dance team in high school, not on the dance team in college, but I went to an HBCU. So by default of being in the band and being a flag girl, I was dancing and I loved it. Um, and then every time I go back for like alumni homecoming, like every other year they have alumni band, I'm in the stands reliving my best <laughs> life right at this age. I actually have video footage, but that's a whole nother thing. So I've been doing 30 minutes of dance a day, probably five, six days a week. And what's interesting about it is it doesn't feel like exercise. Again, it feels like playtime. I put my, you know, my my um, AirPods in. Well, they're not real AirPods, but I put my wireless headphones in and I put my, I set a timer for like 35 minutes and I put my music on shuffle, right? And literally, because I love music so much, it's like, it's, it's like I'm doing three things at one time. I'm getting to reminisce through my music. I'm getting to dance and I'm doing some physical activity. And I enjoy it so much that if I, if there's days where I don't do it, I'd be like, ah, I didn't get my dance in today. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And so I'm not doing it to a YouTube video. I'm not trying to follow a routine. I'm literally just freestyle dancing. Uh, if people saw me, they probably would think I, I look insane, but, um, you know, I'm busting out all my old moves from when I was a kid or from college or my early twenties. And surprisingly, it's a great workout, but it, my goal was just, I want to move my body. And so that's something that I really focused on. And I even took some virtual classes with the Debbie Allen Dance Academy online. So like I have access to a library of like jazz, ballet, um, hip hop, African dance, love that. So that's, that's where I, that's probably my newest hobby that quarantine or not will stay with me for the rest of my life. Because I, it just, the endorphins, the music, the throwback, you know, sometimes I can get a little ratchet because I can't do it nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? Ah! Uh, So I, you know what I'm saying? I can throw it in a circle at my own place. (laughs) Yes, I said it. Um, so that's probably the biggest hobby for me and, um, just playing in my makeup more hobby. It's like painting. Mm -hmm. So that's a great question. Yeah, it really was. Thank you for that. Um, what's up, Rushni? Hey, welcome. Hey, hey, hey. Um, let's see. Uh, Shantae says, have you tried lip bar products or minted? I have not. I've seen the the ads but I haven't have you I haven't tried anything lip bar I do have some minted products I have three glosses Mm. from minted and two lip liners um 
for me, I've seen the lip bar, I've seen people wearing the color like Boss Lady and all that kind of stuff or whatever. I just haven't personally been drawn to the color or the finish of what I've seen from the lip bar, but it's very popular. People seem to love it. Um, for from minted, I do have three glosses. I have like like a brownie nude, a pinky nude, and like a a, a a cranberry. I really like the nudes, very sheer, um, you know, great skin tone match. Um, but I also find, and we're gonna get to this when we start talking about lippies, that I like more of a a balm gloss hybrid. Um, we'll we'll talk about that. But yeah, so I've tried minted, but I haven't tried the lip bar. Mm. do you like you like the minted lip glosses it's okay it's not my favorite um it's okay but let, let, let me let me say this though because I don't want to come across like oh it's not good I decided that I like to lean into higher end makeup products because I like the full experience give me the packaging give me the product quality give me the pretty 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 as well as it needs to be great and so for me I think the quality of the mental lipsticks is I mean the glosses I haven't tried their lipsticks is fine um it's not giving me the whole experience that I want so that's probably what you are hearing out of my voice because I'm probably gonna do a video later about my my new luxury lipstick collection <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's Ooh, it is insane miss r2020 says agree oh. agreed it's similar to people who dress up wear suits to zoom meetings for themselves to feel more normal yes yes and I, I must say i could really do better with that lately <laughs> i'll do the face but then i you know down here it's like but i really could do better with that uh, Shanice says, okay, flag girl. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Angel says dancing is therapeutic for me too. Mm -hmm. Um, Debbie Allen was doing free dance classes on IG too. I had heard about that. I took like one or two. Yep. I oh, did. nice. 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 Okay. So let's, let's move on to the next thing. So we got foundation on, we have concealer, we have brows. Yes. Uh, What's the next? What's the next thing? What do me? you do? What do you do next? We all out of order for me, you know. We all, okay, let me tell you. Okay, if it's if it's if it's primer, foundation, concealer, brows, mm -hmm. and then I I do I clean up my brows. Oh, I then go into setting everything. So at that point, I set under eye, face, contour. I so I do well. I'm more bronze than contour, but yeah, at that point, I'm setting my face. Okay, so we're talking okay. about powder now. Is that yes, because we're, we're oily. Some people don't set, um, but yeah. Yeah, I definitely have set. to set. And my two, I should break break out my other one too, because I do use two powders. I, hold on, let me grab my other powder. <laughs> I love that. Let's see. Let's go to the comment section while she's doing that. That explains why you cheered me on with that number 30 lip balm yes yes she loves the self first of all i love that little avatar russian aid so pretty um but yeah oh no you said that 30 dollar lip balm oh okay <laughs> oh, we'll get there y'all okay we'll get there um so the so powder powers. that i i already see it hold it up Girl. <laughs> I even got let me go because I have wait let's see where is my little oh I thought I had my travel I even have the small version for my travel makeup bag girl so is that that's the regular color right yes yeah I have the the deep I have the deep too it's in my bathroom but um <laughs> girl under eye nobody better Nobody better than Laura Mercier. Go ahead. Yep. Nobody greater. This is really good. This is yeah. really good. I love the fine, how finely milled it is. Um, it just, uh, it gives that blurred type of look to it. It's just amazing. I haven't seen anything. Now I hear good things about the hourglass loose powder. I heard, I heard it was similar to this. Yeah, yes. I hear it was very similar, but I'm like, I already like this. Like, why would I cheat on this? I just wouldn't do it. I'm already here. What? <laughs> I'm 
here. Right. It's already been good to me. So I have the smaller version for my my little um makeup bag, my travel makeup bag, and then I also have the deeper one in my bathroom. But I find that I don't like it under my eyes. And um it's a little too red for me. It and mm-hmm. it does deposit that red. It's not as yeah. like translucent translucent as this. Yes. So that's my only issue with that one, but I can use it like around my face. See, um, it's a little too light for me to go all over. I mean, this is just skin tone, right? So mm-hmm. it sets uh, under eye beautifully for me. And I started with a sample, right? Like, I mean, not a sample, but a smaller one because I had heard about it and like blew through that. And I was like, girl, just go on and just, just mm-hmm. go ahead up to the big one. Um, and so I actually don't keep a small one of this. I in my purse, we're talk about what I keep in my purse because I have some other smaller powders here. But this is like center of my face, this right here. By the way, I don't know if we said what it was. Laura Mercier's translucent powder. <laughs> I was assuming everybody knows this container. Laura right, Laura Mercier. Yes. And then for all over the face for me, I actually like the again. Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Powder. <laughs> well, that's so funny because I feel like we're doing the same thing because I'm using the MAC Studio Fix Powder. Mm. Like we're matching the powder. So this is actually a powder foundation, but I do, I take a really, really fluffy brush. And when we get to, are we going to talk about brushes at all? We we can. I don't um, know if I'm prepared so- to talk about brushes, but I um. <laughs> It's, my brushes are dirty, so y'all just. Oh, have that's to. what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I use this end, so I use this end to set my um concealer. Like, just it's just it's off oh, with the Laura Mercier right there, and then I take the fluffy end, and I'm going all over the face with this. So mm, okay, I, I pricey, but I love it. Yes. I um. Anything. The I like this because it also gives you coverage. Yep. Um, so if I'm using a little bit of less foundation, I can get a little bit more coverage with this. Mm-hmm. And for me, I always get the red version or the version that's more red in the powder. Um, mm-hmm. And then because I'll have yellow on the bottom, red on top. And for me, it just it works. It works because <clears throat> super yellow is not cute and um, it's not realistic. And sometimes it can be so yellow, it can look a little gray green. I don't know. But I find that when I use a little bit uh, of powder that's a little bit more red in color, it's just, mm-hmm. it's it's perfection. So I'm already on like pan, you know, with this. <laughs> now I would say I do have three other powders that I use sometimes, mm-hmm. okay? If my face, for whatever reason, is reading too red orange, I will come in with my cover effects. Um, translucent powder and this is a colored one so I'm my undertone is neutral warm this is very neutral and so if I feel like my face is a little too orangey or whatever I will set with this Um, and this is like you know the mini size so I love this or I'll use the Fenty Beauty and Nutmeg right Um, if I need to kind of offset it but you were talking about carrying something in your purse I have, this is the small size, but I have the sample size of the, well, at the time it was Kat Von D, the KVD Locket Powder. Mm-hmm. If I'm doing Becca to control my oil and for some event or something like that, oh, I'm setting with Locket because it's not going to move. Really? Gonna move. I haven't, I haven't used that. <laughs> I haven't used that, mm-hmm. but I it hear good things about it. Yeah, it's translucent. I wouldn't use this under my eyes, though. I wouldn't use this under my eyes. Sorry, girl. I got something, some situation over here. I'm trying to figure, figure out oh. how to get rid of it. Oh, did somebody get it already? I forget. We forgot to do the moderator thing. Mm-hmm. We- Let's see. Are we good? Because I don't see it on YouTube, but I see it here in this. I see the comments on YouTube, but I I don't like it's not crazy. Mm. Hi, Miss Carter. Hey, girl. Did we talk about um my brows just yet? We did. 
<laughs> we did. We sure did. Let me tell you, when I first encountered Patricia online, I was like, it's the brows for me. Um, like, I've always been like, oh, her brows. There's only two people, uh, and they both have very different brows, but there's only two people that I've looked at their brows and been like, I will never be able to <laughs> like that. And it's Patricia, and the other person is Tony Daly. Like, I don't know why I like her brows so much. They're just like, it's just an easy arch. Like, it's just, it's just like, she does Very have simple. nice brows, she, yeah. She has nice brows. Always has had. They're not crazy. You've always had a very nice, really crispy brow. And I just, I love a crispy brow. My brows don't look like that, but girl. She always says this, and her brows always look good to me. Always, always. No, Miss- my, cousin, my brows look like um, divorcees, is what I was telling somebody. Like, it's gotten better recently, but like, they don't... Did I just curl my whole back of my earring just came off? Okay. Mm. Um, y'all ignore me while I while I get this. We might just have to take these earrings off. Oh, they came off themselves. Okay, great. So go look at some of my old videos. My brows are doing like this. It's crazy. More recently, I've been trying to, instead of following the hair, I've been following like the actual bone structure because I was like, girl. They don't look like cousins. They don't look like twins. They don't look like sisters. They look like two people who used to be together who had a bad breakup. Um, I can't. And they can't stand each other. I can't. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm working on it. I'm just trying to be like you. <laughs> Miss Carter. Basically, Evelyn and I use the same type of product and we feel the same type of way. It's just basically a micro pencil. Yeah. Um, And then... A for me, I also use a brow gel and then concealer. Yep. I still do concealer under the brows. I know people are like, oh, that's you know, not a thing. I think to myself, but I've always done concealer under the brows. It's just that I didn't look like the people that people were talking about. Like you you you're not gonna see a halo brow for me ever. Mm-hmm. Um and I hope that it doesn't look overly like, oh, this is crazy light right here. So I like that finishing touch because when my eyebrows aren't all the way together, I can make them look a little bit more together. So I like that look. Me too. I mean, obviously, I've I've always liked a clean brow. I'm not going to be the type of person that can do like the boy brow thing. It's just okay. not me. Um, I think it's become a little bit just of my look. I don't mind the lighter concealer under the eyes. When you get your brows done, And you see this pigment under here is a lot lighter than the rest of your eyes and the rest of your face. And so to me, it's all about mimicking that, like whatever's happening naturally. And so I still, I I tend to use the same concealer that I used to brighten my face under my eyebrows as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, Let's see. Where were we at? Oh, powders. No, I wanted to share another powder that I really, really, really like, especially if y'all like, no, Patricia, Evelyn, I'm not doing KVD. I'm not doing Estee Lauder um, or Laura Mercier. This one's really good. This is by L'Oreal. This is the True Match uh, Super Blendable Powder. To me, this is a dupe to the Estee Lauder one and also to the MAC Studio Fix um, powder. See, it's... I would just wish sometimes they would come in my shades in the drugstore. The drugstore have be, be having me looking ashy. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, but you know what great. they've done um i mean this one went pretty deep and they've extended you know everybody's extending their lines everybody's trying to be like inclusive now all of a sudden oh, um so you know for those of you guys who are watching check back and see what they have but this one is um it actually it outperforms this one in terms of coverage mm-hmm. and the mac one like i could wear this all over my face with and then that just be the look for the day you know um, so I really, I really like it. So this is the one that if I want to carry a powder around with me, mm-hmm. it'll actually be this. Cause it'll give me a little bit of coverage as well. Um, and it's, it's a matte like type of, there's no shimmer in it, whatever. Right. So this one I tend to keep with me for, uh, traveling, but if I'm home and it's my moment before I get out the house, just these two mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for sure. Now, do you do a bronzer or a contour or anything like that? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have one product. You have one product? 
this one. Share, share. It's a bronzer. I think for me, it, bronzer contour, I mean, I'm really thinking cool, warm, right? It's kind of how I view the two. Um, and this, this was all the rage when it came out. This is the Makeup Revolution Splendor Ultra Matte Bronzer. Mm -hmm. Let me Look at the size of this pan. Mm. I love it. I don't need nothing else. Like, yes, I was looking at the Gucci bronzers, but I already had this. I was looking at the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer, but I already had this. And I was like, ah, this. And I have four shades. Um, because at the time I was just so excited. I think this is seven bucks. Mm. It's massive though, right? Like, I'm gonna have this for a long time. So this is the shade deep. Um, and I use this as my bronzer. So, yeah. Um, the first, let me tell you what was crazy. The first shade I bought in this, I wish I could, it's in my bathroom, but I wish I could remember the, the name of the shade, was too dark, which, like, for me is never, like, it was too dark. And I was like, oh, this is, like, deep, deep. I was like, let me go up two shades. And then I found my perfect shade. And they even have a shade in the bronzer that's my exact skin tone that if I, that a couple of times I was like, let me just see what this looks like as an all over powder. It's beautiful. But yes, this is what I use. And I, I love it. You told me about that one. And I think when I went to go look, it was out of stock. Yeah. Oh, it it's was sold out. out. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to go back and check and see mm -hmm. um, if I can get my hands on it. But the one that I use is old school flashback all the way back to the CoverGirl Queen Collection bronzer. <laughs> First of all, where are you finding that? Girl, it's impossible to find. Absolutely impossible. Some Ulta's will have it. I don't know if online you can find it at Ulta, but definitely on um, Amazon, you can definitely find this for sure. Mm -hmm. So yes, wow. hip pan. I I like to have a little bit of sun in my you know bronzer, and mm -hmm. so this is the one that I probably use the most. Otherwise, I tend to just go for like a regular powder that's a few shades deeper than mm -hmm. my skin tone. But thank you for the super chat, um, Home Record TV. Appreciate it. That was nice, <laughs> right? <laughs> That hasn't happened before. Um, but yes, that's typically what I use or a powder like this one. This one's from um, Lancome. Just a powder that's like a few shades deeper than my skin tone. Mm -hmm. Hit pan on that one. So this is a, like an all over face powder that I just use as a contour. How do you feel about cream contour? So me, as the, as the oily skin person, you're not going to find me with cream contour. You're not going to find me with cream blush. You're not going to find me with cream. If it's cream for the fake cream foundation sticks the way my skin is set up she's like no ma'am not over here now when people do it people, particularly people who have like normal dry skin I think it's beautiful when they do it well right it looks very like emollient skin like and I'd be like that's real cute I would come out looking like the tin man getting oiled up so I can't do it but I'm I'm just not a big fan of cream face products in general mm -hmm. um just because of the oil. So, and some people are like, oh no, if you're oily, you can do it. I'd be like, mm -hmm, okay, all right. Nope, I'm not doing it. So, um, <laughs> but I think when people do it, you know, it works. I've seen oily people do it. And I'd be like, girl, come back to me in four hours and show me what your face look like. Right. <laughs> Cause I don't, like you said earlier, I'm not a big touch up during the day. The most I want to do is maybe sweep a little powder on to take off some shine or blot. I'm not big into reapplying like face steps, mm -hmm. right? Um, all I'm going to do throughout the day is manage the oil. And if I'm going somewhere else, maybe touch up a lip, but I don't want to like be redoing steps. So yeah. Right. That, yeah, I feel the same way. I had a moment with cream contour. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, I, I really like the look, but I found that my makeup day was longer like my makeup time was longer because um, mm -hmm. I was really concerned about blend you know blending and stuff like that and I found myself overusing not overusing but compensating with primer because of how 
greasy, I would guess. <laughs> okay. Miss <laughs> Carter 78 says the Queen Collection bronzer bronzer is an OG. I got mine um off of Amazon. Yeah. I have a few of them. Um one I got from Ulta and then the other one oh, I got Kesha. from Amazon. Yeah, Kesha. yeah, girl. Well, because let me tell you what I used to use was a bronzer from Shea Moisture, Mandalay Dusk, and it's discontinued. I I had three of them. I wore them things. Not even just hit pan. Like, then I was swirling around the sides. It just, it worked. It wasn't as deep as this, so this definitely shows up more, but I loved it. It was the first yes. bronzer that I felt like didn't look like a cool tone contour on me. And so I was just like, oh, this is cute. And then they sold the company, and then they discontinued it. And I was like, I right. loved it. Mandalay Dusk. I it, loved it. I, it was gorgeous. Yes. Um, it had a small amount of sheen to it. Too. It did. It, it did. Nice. And I like that. And I, I like that in a, in a bronzer. Oh, when I, go when I don't, when I don't want, I have room for that too. That's when I'll use the powder. But mm -hmm. a lot of times I do like to have just a tiny bit of sunshine in mm -hmm. my bronzer. Miss mm -hmm. R2020 says, what's something that, um, you used to use do pre COVID that you skip or no longer do now makeup wise or just in life. I'm assuming she just means in life. Let's answer both. Is there a makeup step that you skip right now? Um, that you used mm -mm. to not No. I'm still putting full, um, full face. I will say for me for makeup, sometimes I do skip lipstick and I might oh. just do like a lip gloss or lip balm only because of the mask situation. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, I'm trying to up, you know, buy some more liquid lipsticks so I don't have to do that. But right. yeah, sometimes I will skip that step. But okay, so in life. Going out to eat. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I do not like chain restaurants. Um, call it, call me a food snob. If you take me to a chain restaurant, you don't love me. Um, and so like, but I would go out to eat like for sport, like, because I want to see what chefs are doing. I want to support my chef friends who have establishments or people that I went to culinary school with, or I just, oh, and Dallas has more restaurants, I think per square mile than any city in the United States. I don't know. Well, is it per capita or per square mile? Like more than New York per whatever. Right. So we, we, we got a heavy restaurant scene, like to the point where I used to run like a dining club several years ago and take people to my different favorite one of a kind restaurants. And so right now, because of someone who has had a compromised immune system in the past, I have not been going out to restaurants. So, and I, I miss it. I, <laughs> I miss it. Um, I will order out, right. Um, on occasion, but that's probably the one thing just because the way my immune system is set up, she, she likes to be well taken care of. Um, Patricia can attest to this. And so I don't like to, uh, play with her emotions. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, that's the, that's probably the biggest thing. I mean, also I'm not going to church in person right now. Uh, even though my church has reopened, y'all want me to sing with my mouth open with people? No, I no, not going. So those are probably the two biggest things. Um, and I miss going with my friends and, you know, ordering way too much on the menu and <laughs> regretting it later. And yeah, so that's what I miss. Oh. What about you in life? Yeah. in in life pre COVID, I think for, for me is church mm -hmm. that I, <laughs> like, this is, it's crazy. Listen, when I tell you I was born on a pew, like <laughs> I was born on the pew. And so this is the longest like I have ever. I remember when I used to skip one service because I wasn't feeling good or whatever. And this was after I was like living on my own. I still felt, even in my sickness felt uncomfortable mm -hmm. about me being home. And now I haven't been to since like March. Like that is crazy. And of course I watch virtually and, and whatnot, but you know, I must say there, for me, there's nothing like that fellowship, that mm -hmm. in-person fellowship. And mm -hmm. so, um, 
Yeah, that's that's probably the thing that I'm I'm no longer doing right now. And I, I don't even know when I'll feel comfortable with doing too. That's right. like the, the scary thing about it too. Yeah. That it really might be a while. Oh, thank you, Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. What? So where are we in the makeup steps? We, we've done powder, bronzer, concealer, foundation, eyebrows. So I think we're into some color, right? So what do you do next? So at this point on my face, my bases together, brows are done, concealer, powder, contour. Um, I then go into eyeshadow. So that, but at this point, you've already done eyeshadow. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about eyeshadow. Let's talk about eyeshadow. So would you say that you have like a signature look or do you feel like every time you do your, your eye looks is different? Cause I feel like I have like a, my own signature, like my go-to standard look or standard process, even if I'm changing the colors. So I do have a few, um, Hey Jamisha, I do have a few different looks that I do. Mm-hmm. Maybe like two, two, three, three mm-hmm. different, and then I just kind of change the colors or three different methods, I should say, and then right. I just change the colors within those methods. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Um, and so I will say I don't wear eyeshadow every day. I don't. I do not have eyeshadow on right now. Mm. Um, but when I do, it's typically a neutral type look. Mm-hmm. And if not, then I feel like there's no middle for me. It's either it's like neutral or it's like bam, you know. <laughs> yeah. there's, no, there's no middle for me. But yeah, I don't yeah. think I have a signature look though. I actually like dipping into different colors, even if it's neutral. It mm-hmm. won't be the same three. You know what I mean? It'll be or the same four or the same two. Mm-hmm. It'll be like a you know slightly different variation to it. Yeah. No, I have, I don't, I won't say I have a signature look as far as like, I'm using the exact same colors, but I definitely have a signature way that I'd like to look, meaning, um, you know, like you're probably not going to see me in a cut crease. Um, cause that just, I have hooded eyes. And so that doesn't really work well for my eye shape. Um, I'm definitely like a three color, you know, um, transition shade, lid shade, outer corner. That's kind of like my standard look. And I realize the older I get, the more I do. Like I have like two looks. It's kind of like my everyday look. And now I can intensify that or make it softer depending on what colors I'm using. And then I have like, if I'm doing a smoky look where I'm going dark on the actual eyelid uh, and how that looks, that's usually a bit different. But you're going to catch me in a wing. Mm-hmm. Um uh, there's going to be a wing eye. And let me say, let me tell y'all something that Patricia don't know. Let me tell y'all, come close. <laughs> so for years, I used to look at Patricia's eyeliner and was like, how do I get my eyeliner like hers? So I literally would like watch her vlogs and pause it and be like, oh, she, okay, she go thicker right there. Like I would copy her. <laughs> her winged eyeliner shape she has no idea that like <laughs> this I do this and so out of everybody's wing eyeliner I've always tried to copy my wing eyeliner after hers like when I'm really trying to do it right now I got my quick little but everybody else would be like flat or it mm-hmm. would be like real skinny on the end or whatever and I'll always be like oh hers looks so nice or if some, some of them like go upwards this way I don't know like too straight yeah mm-hmm. And I, I like, I'm not saying that I'm a winged eyeliner pro, but I definitely have found the shape of wing that I like for my eye. Mm-hmm. And the only other person that I've seen with a wing eyeliner that I like over any of y'all favorite beauty gurus <laughs> is God's Design, Patricia. <laughs> a God's Design. And she don't know this for years. Mm-hmm. I still, and when I was seeing it on Instagram stories, I'd be like, that's that wing that I like. <laughs> And I'm, I'm learning about this right now. That's yeah. so crazy. No, yeah. you know, I, and maybe it's because, you know, I have hooded eyes too. So I find that I can't, I have, I've created this way that I do it. And it's the same shape, whether sometimes it's shorter or longer. Yeah. It is just the same. That sort of works, works for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do feel like people, everybody has their own style. Yes. To their eyeliner 
And I'll see someone, I'm like, ooh, that's cute. And I try it, and I'm like, ooh, that's not cute. Not I don't need. Like, some people's wing, the like, my wing comes past my eye, right? Mm-hmm. Some people's wing sh- starts and ends before that eye is over, so it's a little bit of a shorter wing. Mm-hmm. I try that. My mm-hmm. face don't like it. <laughs> she don't like it. So... <laughs> I tend to do that like today. That's what I have going on. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why it's not extended because um, I don't have any eyeshadow on. And I don't know. I just feel like if I'm going to do all that, I'm going to need eyeshadow too to do that. Um, See, I cannot not have on eyeshadow. Even if it's just mm-hmm. like a small wash of color. If I got on makeup, I feel like the way my face is set up, I need to contour the shape of my eye. Even if it's just, let me throw a little brown in the crease. Mm. Yeah, I think, girl, sometimes, but just not on today. It's- hey, you look good. Okay, you look good. <laughs> Thank you. So let's talk about eyeshadow. I- eyeshadow. Well, we got some comments. Okay, so Miss um, Carter says, have you tried minted foundation? Oh, we talked about that, Miss Carter, at the beginning. I've tried their lip glosses and lip pencils, so you can catch that kind of at the beginning. Um but I have tried their lip glosses and lip pencils. Yes, Miss R and R. I miss wearing my lipstick because of it. Yeah, yeah. We chatted about that earlier too. Long wearing liquid lipsticks. Go for those. Yeah. They're less. Um, they transfer less. They last all day, and they can stand the test of time. Past, you know, you know, they can um, withstand even while using your mask for an extended period of time. Yeah. Um, let me but, ask you this question before we get into eyeshadow. We didn't talk about blush though, but go ahead. Mm-hmm, listen, girl. So this is this is what I'm about to ask you. Uh huh. <laughs> what is your favorite makeup step or makeup product? Like not product, like brand, but like what's your favorite step in makeup? Like is eyeshadow your thing? Is lips your thing? Is is complexion your thing? Like what's when you do it? You're like ah. Oh, Yes, this is why I enjoy putting on makeup. I'm gonna tell you what mine is in a minute, but I want to know if you if you even have one. Hmm, that's hard. Um, I'm actually probably gonna say foundation. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. When I say like something that sort of lights my fire, that. When there's something new out, I'm paying attention. Um, if it's a lipstick, it, I'm like, cute. I've seen them all. Um, if it's an eyeshadow palette, I'm interested. Mm-hmm. Let me see. But me not see. not as interested. I'm definitely a complexion person. To mm-hmm. me, everything else will look good if you got that complexion right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I would say, if anything, foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can see that. For me, it's blush. And Mm. specifically, blush palettes, which are not very popular. Um, I don't know what it is. I like blush. I like you to see my blush, okay? Um, Like you said, I like eyeshadow. And and, and if I'm looking, you know, I see the palettes, but because I kind of have a signature look, I kind of know what I need in my collection and what I don't. Mm -hmm. I never want to be the person to say, in my collection, oh, my God. Yeah, this is really how our girl talks to me. Like, this is probably one of the most organic. Like, we'll do this on FaceTime. Yep. And calling back and forth, y'all. Like, so this is for real how we, we, we don't always be ocean floor deep. <laughs> but, okay, back to our favorite products. But if you are talking about a blush, I'm like, where is it? How can I buy it? Run it to me. I don't care how much it costs, but I prefer a palette over individual blushes because if and let me tell you why because I like blush so much and because you use so little if I dipped my toe in the arena of individual blushes it'd be like taking my first hit of drugs or something because I would just lose my mind and so because there's not a lot of blush palettes on the market at least that work for my skin tone I've been able to keep I don't want to say my blush collection is small but it's not massive but I have a lot of blushes because they're in palette form. So that's my favorite step. So mm. let's talk eyeshadow. Yes. Okay. So let's go to eyeshadow. I was getting my blushes ready. Look at, let's go to eyeshadow. Ooh, okay. Are we doing like favorite palette? Like, how are we doing this? Cause this well, is here's the thing it's for me. The 
<laughs> this is for me. I I do not like single single shadows. I'm just oh. not a single shadow person. Yeah. For me, it's palettes all Palette. day. And yeah. to me, the art is um, coming up with a. How, I don't. This is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe that'll work. I've been trying everything. It's not working. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. For me, part of the art is the color story. Um, can I get a one look out of this? And how many looks can I get without leaving this palette? And then how often will I be able to, will I want to pick it up? Mm. What types of places I'm going to wear it? Like, to me, it's not just about one eyeshadow for all of them in the mm -hmm. palette. So, um I stopped buying single shadows a long time ago. Like, I gave them all away. Yes, I gave them all away. If I can't, I don't even like, and I know this sounds weird, but I don't even like the Build-A-Bear palettes. I don't want to say I don't like it. I'm not drawn to it because what I'm drawn to is the whole story and the theme and, you know, and everything like that. So even if it's a neutral, neutral palette, I want the experience of whatever the company was trying to do with that palette, you know? Uh, I think for me, I don't, I'm not, you're, I'm with you. I gave up single shadows back in the Mac days, like with the one, cause I was just like, you know what, to your point, I want to look now at this phase of my life. Like I said, I'm very clear about how I like to look. And so I like to have, I don't necessarily need a look out of every palette, right? Like I don't need to be able to do a full look out of every palette. What I like is to have some base palettes where it's like this palette will give me my signature look over and over and over and over and over again. And then I like to have complementary palettes around that, that if I want to pull in some this color story or that color story, I can do that. So you'll probably see, I laid out all my eyeshadow palettes the other day and I was like, you don't need no more base palettes. Like your signature look palettes, your signature color story, girl, you got that. You need to supplement with some color. So, um, but I do have, I would say at least a, a palette that I've been using the most recently for my signature look. And I have it on my eyes right now, but I want you to go first. But I think we're, we're different in that regard. Like I like a base palette that I can get my signature look. And then I like complimentary patterns. And you're like, can I get it all from this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have two to share. Uh, with you all and um, because we could be here all day <laughs> but um, I'm only going to share share two and the first one is my most recent purchase mm -hmm. actually and I've already sh shared this with Evelyn y'all we already had our our, our haul <laughs> um, but this is the Lorac Pro Palette the Noir version this is a relatively new mm -hmm. palette and um, for those of you guys who really like uh, neutral type looks. Just do it quick. Here we go. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> for those of you all who like neutral palettes, to me this is a, this is like neutral, neutral, neutral glamour. Um, I just love it. I love the um, oh nope, it's on this side. These um really shimmery colors are so 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 pretty. I love this dark um plummy brown that's in here. And then there's that warm or warm neutral type brown. Then there's the warmer red brown. I mean, I, all these like blunt, like um, transition, smoky. I just love it. I don't have to go anywhere else. If I mm -hmm. want to step out with this, I can. My only criticism, criticism is this paper with all the names on it. <clears throat> it's irritating yeah. because, you know, um, we got to have the names. So Lorac Pro Palettes, that's one. And the other one is by... Um, Miss Miss um Pat herself, Miss Pat McGrath. Mm -hmm. And girl, help me out, Evelyn. This is open it so I can see it. Mothership. Oh, that is um that's number three. Is that number three? Is that number three? I think it's number three, which I forgot the name. I think it might be subversive or sublime. No, mm -hmm. I don't know. I want that one. I don't have that one. Oh, dang it. I don't know. It's not on here, y'all. But anyway, it's one of them. It might be three. It might be three. Really, really like this. I love, again, my my palettes have to have like these base base colors right here. It's mm -hmm. got to have a black. It's got to have a brown. The green is gorgeous. 
in here. Anytime I wear this green in a video, people are like, what is going on with this look? Um, the gold, the pink, everything in here to me is kind of like perfection. I can get a lot of looks out of this. Mm -hmm. It's not one that I would travel with alone, though. No. The Lorac I would, but if I need glamour, if I need face, I'm going to go to Pat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, yes, those are the two that I would those share. I'm trying, okay, I'm trying to narrow my choices down. Okay, here's the one that gives me my signature look. So, like I said, my, my undertone is neutral warm. My favorite eye look is is like using neutral colors to contour my eye, right? Sometimes all matte, sometimes a shimmer. And, you know, I'm normally not, before I put this palette up, I'm normally not one to fall into the hype, right? I'm, I'm normally not one to fall into the hype. Some people love this palette. Some people don't love this palette. If you do not like warm tone shadows, this ain't the palette for you. But for me, I love it. And I can't get a whole look out of this palette and I can vary my look. And that is the Natasha Denona bronze palette. I have that on today. Full on, smoke the crease, everything. This palette, okay, I'm holding it upside down because the mirror is mm -hmm. quite large. Every crease color I need, every lid color I need, every shade of bronze, gold, because I find that on my skin tone, while I like gold tones, on my eyes, sometimes it can be a little too stark on the lid if it's like a shimmery or a glitter. But a bronze gives me that shimmer without being like, hey, look at my eyeshadow, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I love this. And, you know, this color right here, at first I didn't think I was going to like it to smoke out the crease because it's very neutral, slightly cool, um, because she was pulling all the different, like, variations of bronze, right? Um, but then I started using it. First of all, it's her creamy matte formula or, like, cream to powder uh, formula right here every day. If y'all see me with a neutral eye, 9.95 9 times out of 10 is this palette right here. Am I doing old school for, listen, I'm doing old school while I'm covering up. <laughs> Think, so it's upside down. Let me, okay, this is probably a better look at what it actually looks like. So the Natasha Denona bronze, um, it's just, I could travel with this by itself and be done. I like the size of it. It's not crazy massive. It's hard. The names are in it. The mirror is big. Um, and then my other one where I can get a slightly less warm look um, and I still can smoke it out. I, I would prefer if it had, Patricia knows what this is. I would prefer if it had a deeper brown instead of the black, but it's the Wayne Goss Luxury Eye Palette. Like, again, it's giving me black, it's giving me brown, it's giving me orangey this, it's giving me toppers. It's, it's giving me a neutral eye with a little bit more sparkle. So, um for me, that's my signature look. It's going to be all orangey, brownsy, bronzy, goldy, sparkly. That's like, I was telling Patricia, I love greens and blues, but when I put them on my face, I, I just don't think I have the skill to pull it off unless it's just like on the lower lash line. Because when I be trying to put it on my lips, I'll be looking like a clown. So I love, I, I love this. And I just love how big this, the pans are because this color right here, on my cheeks, you ain't tell me nothing, okay? Gorgeous. Gives me like that natural, slightly terracotta, mm. um, but with a little bit of shimmer, but not like a highlight. Because when we get to that, you'll notice I, I won't have any highlights. Um, yeah, so the Wayne Goss luxury eye palette. It's funny because I'm like, I don't even follow Wayne Goss, I don't like follow his channel or anything, but this eyeshadow palette, girl. So, okay, so we have done eyeshadow. Yes. Um, uh, we have a question, comment, I should say. Is there any, is there a product that we can use slash apply to protect us from masking? At first, I didn't have the problem, but now I'm beginning to have a couple of breakouts. This is a really good question, Ms. Carter. And anybody, if, if anybody has like a remedy or anything that they do, uh, definitely share that. I think for me, and again, I don't have to use it a whole lot in my day-to-day -day life. You know, when I'm going out, it's for a few hours at a time. I don't have to like work a whole day uh, with a mask. So I, I must say that um, 
I know my experience is a little bit different, but there have been times where I've had to go into work for several hours at a time and then back to back. And I'm like, oh, this is what people are talking about. Like, this is crazy. And really just the build build up of the, your, the steam and then your natural sebum coming through and this kind of clogging your pores um, makes the situation real bad. For me, what I have found is just making sure that you keep a good skin regimen um, and, you know, stay consistent with what you do and stay, you know, very hydrated. And then attacking when you start to see the beginnings of things creeping up. That's the advice that I would give you, but I haven't had to deal with it super, super heavy myself. So that's what I would say. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm probably even less of a help. I, I work from home and I have no office to go into. So when I'm, when I have a mask on, I'm literally like running errands. Um, and then I'm back at the house. So I don't, I don't have any recommendations except for like Patricia said, um, just keeping really, really good skincare. You know, if you are using a reusable mask, like making sure you're washing it really well, changing it out. I will say this, and not everybody's skin can handle this, so don't like go douse your face in this just because I tell you this. I got to put this disclaimer. I'm not a dermatologist, okay? But I'm telling you, when I do have blemishes that want to pop up on my skin before they even come to a head, what I have found that works for me is I get a little bit of apple cider vinegar and I dab it on there. I don't like, I put it on my finger. I don't even put it on a cotton swab, right? I have a special bottle that's just for my bathroom. And literally, I just let it dry on the face. Like, so there'll be a little wet spot. I let it dry on the face uh, on clean skin. And literally, that thing will never come to a head. Like, it, it will just, it will just shrivel up and die uh, mm -hmm. most of the time. And so people are like, how do you, when you get a blue? Not all the time, but if I catch it, when I just start to feel the sensation or just that little, raised in the skin I'd be like doop 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 you gonna die tonight <laughs> now some people have really sensitive skin so putting straight apple cider vinegar on their skin is not a good idea but girl with all this oil I got on my face my skin is like girl bring it uh <laughs> we can fix it. and it just it it just will dry it right on up so that's that's, that's a good question um R, R O says I'm enjoying this thank you ladies for this I like makeup because there's all kinds, high end and the more affordable ones. There's really no excuse. Plus, I feel pretty with my makeup on. Yes. We talked about that earlier. It just does something for for you. It just you know brightens up your day, gives you that confidence, gives you that extra bit of moxie, whatever it is, when you uh, wake up and when you enter a room. So I love it. I love it. I, I do. I walk different. I talk different when I got you know, wing eyeliner and a red lip on. It's just... <laughs> the fact that we can sit here and talk about this and we still not done with the full face. <laughs> right, girl. Let's move on. We have, I think we have blush lips left over and then somebody brought up eyelashes too. Girl. So we'll talk about that. And then we want to share at least one or two skin stuff. So um, let's go. Let's go to lips next. Yes, because I feel like I'm going to go on about blushes. <laughs> Let's talk about, let's talk about looks. I only have, um, two things to share with you all. Um, I didn't have, I haven't, um, I do have my liquid lipsticks, but I'm not too familiar with them yet. So I'm not, I don't want to share those just yet because <clears throat> I want to put those things to the test. Mm -hmm. But the two lipsticks that I have been, one of them I have on that I really have been loving. And one of these Evelyn knows is um, also by Pat McGrath, and it's the Matte Trance Lipstick in McManamy. Girl, I never pronounced it right. Girl. <laughs> Mc M C M E N A M Y. McManamy. McManamy. And y'all, I go to, I forgot what video it is. We're both in black. We both have that color on mm -hmm. at the same time. That's so pretty. So pretty. It's like this purple, red, brown. I know. Here's it's mine. It's just, it's so gorgeous. It's so I pretty. I love it. Mm, it's so, so it. pretty. Oh my goodness. It's just fall vibes, winter vibes all the way. Oh, and grab then, my you said what? I'm going to grab my mine while you're talking. I forgot to grab my favorite. Oh, okay. So yeah, I love this. Perfect for the season. And the other one I'm going to share with you is also very perfect for the season. For me, red, you can wear red all the time, but I honestly love red around the holidays. 
um, and this particular red is from Gucci and it is Mira Crimson and I really do love this it's like a Ooh. bricky it's like a brick red kind of like does it say that oh, yeah it says no it says crimson it's like a brick red I I really really like it I have it on right now with absolutely no lip liner which is not typical for me but once I figured I could pull it off I was like okay red <laughs> lip it is so pretty and it's got I don't think you can see it's got the little the Gucci stamp right there in the lipstick Mm -hmm. It is so pretty. I've worn this a couple of times since I've gotten it. I like the texture. It does transfer a little bit, which is fine um, under normal circumstances, but this would be like the perfect matte color for me because mm -hmm. it clings without drying. Yes. So I really do like like that. It has like that. Um, <laughs> it has like that old lady smell like all old lady Wait, cosmetic smell like <laughs> i don't know like old estee lauder old lancome type of scent to it which i actually find endearing but yes. it makes you feel like i'm grown <laughs> yes <laughs> it really does so if you don't have a red y'all get you a red it doesn't have to be bright if you feel like this is bright but get you something more like subdued or whatever for the holiday maybe even something with a little shimmer in it that's not my thing but i see it on other people i'm like oh that's cute um yeah i just i love red yeah yeah i love it, it looks good on you thank you <laughs> okay i just realized that i think right under blush lip products are my favorite mm. um i have more than two but i'm gonna try to keep it brief um the first one is that I realized that when it comes to reds, there's two types of reds that I like. I like a blue base red and I like a pinky red. I'm not a fan of an orange base red at all on me. Um, so when I got this lipstick earlier this year, I was like, oh, pinky red is like my signature color. So this is the lipstick. I forgot, oh, what's the name of this? Do they have it on the bottom? Um... Oh, it's a matte lipstick. I don't know the name of this one. No, yes, I do. It's called, um, it just, it just, okay, I'm gonna have to come back and put it in the comments. I, but first of all, can we just get into the packaging? I told y'all before, I'm, I'm here for the packaging. So this is Carolina Herrera and, um, this is the red. It's, oh, it looks kind of gross right now, but it looks much brighter on camera than it does in person. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's a pinky red. And every time I wear it, people are like, what color is that? Um, it's fragrance. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm not a big fan of that. I would turn it around for y'all to see the Carolina Herrera logo, but because I wore it with some lip liner, like the lip liners on the top of the lipstick and it looks kind of disgusting. Um, and when I say fragrance, like perfumed, I'm not a fan of that, but it's so soft on the lips. It's pinky red. And then I just, because I like the experience of makeup, this is doing me. Okay. I love it. Um, what I have on right now is, um, I, this is more so, I like all the colors, but I like the formula. This is Pat McGrath. These are her, y'all, the name is so ridiculously long. Lip Fetish the Vinyl Lip Shines. Okay. Okay. And they are, so the, mm. I, I'm such a bad beauty blogger. So it's this kind of shape. Imagine a lipstick, a lip gloss, and a lip balm had a baby. And that's what this is. So there is definitely color payoff, but there is a little bit of sheerness to this. So I find that I actually like this better than lip gloss because it gives me the shine. It gives me the pigmentation, but the feeling of it on the lips feels like a lip balm. Mm. So uh, do I use a liner with the Pat McGrath lipstick? Are you talking to Patricia or um, about the McNanamy? Because some of my Pat McGraths, I definitely use a liner for. Yeah, but she put it She put it a little bit earlier. I think she's talking about the Mc, McNanamy. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't use a lip liner with that. I Not just that use one. it. I just use it by itself. Yeah. Uh, um, so... And then the last two um, is 
Lisa Eldridge, her lipstick formula. Where is the color? In where is it? Hold on, I'm looking through my. That's the only thing about some of these lipsticks you have to pick up every single one. Divine Brown. This is the perfect nude for me. I I put it on. It is the brown lipstick I have been looking for my whole life. Um, one. The magnetic closure gets me the gold component, but her matte lipsticks aren't as dry to me as like Mac. Like Matt will have Mac will have your lips like crusted over. Um, and the act, y'all, I don't know if y'all can see this, but she the way she forms the bullet, it actually looks like velvet in the tube. This color, and there's another color called um Velvet Myth. Um that I I got it right here. Yeah, you have the velvet mint. Do you like it? You never told me. So, you know, I love the gold. <laughs> oh, you don't like it. Oh, I'm so sad because I feel like I convinced you to buy it. So, I love the gold and um, I will say I love I love the component. I love the fact that it looks like that, um, like fel- like that velvet. Here's the thing. I feel like the color, two things. It didn't sit well on my lip. Now, granted, I will say that I think it's because of the lip balm that I used under it. Mm-hmm. So I have to give this another chance. Okay. With the Jack Black one, because that's the well, one I typically used to be wearing for hours when we were FaceTiming. Yeah, I mean, it just—I didn't like the way that it it sat on my lips. It kind of felt. I felt my my um. It's separating and like my lips was getting like a little crack. I was like, maybe I need to exfoliate, use a different thing and then use this. But um, also the color wasn't, it didn't look like the way it looked on you. Like to on you, it looked. But see, I tried to tell you, I don't know what this woman does with her lipsticks. It looks different from woman to woman because of the way she does the undertones. So on mm-hmm. me, it looks, it looks berry in the tube. So Velvet Myth, let me pull it up again. That's Velvet Midnight. Velvet Myth. See, on camera, it's looking brick red, right, mm-hmm. right now. In person, this looks like a berry. Let me just, okay. So that looks way more red on camera than it looks in person right now. On my lips, it looks like a red um, on me and not a berry. But in person, it looks berry. I, I don't know what it is. So. I wish it looked like this on my lips but so, it pulls more berry on me it definitely pulls more pink purple see because this is it in the gloss right and i'm looking at it in the camera this is velvet mint in her gloss embrace and again it's giving me brick red on the camera and giving me berry in person and on the lips this gives me berry burgundy um well, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that you didn't like no, it. No, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try it again. I I, okay. I am determined <laughs> to make it work. No, Listen, I think I think it was the 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 what I used under it. Yes, too. I really do. Yeah. So this is my last favorite lipstick. Um, Patricia has seen this. This is um, Hermes in Rose Indian. It looks so bright, uh, but it's not. They Now, I will say this. My only complaint about this is they call this a matte, and this is not matte. This is a regular old mm-hmm. satin lipstick. I don't mind because I like satin lipsticks, but um, I, I love this color. It's, mm. it's pinky red, but, like, more pink, right? I love, love, love this color, and I love the magnetic closure. I'm loving the coin on the top. Y'all know I said I like the whole experience. So that's okay. That's what this is. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like my Pat McGrath, but some of my Pat McGraths feel on the lip the way Mac feels on the lip to me. Some of them are a little, a little crust, crust. Mm. I haven't gotten that with them just yet, but. Uh, <laughs> Miss Carter says you guys need to host a Zoom uh, makeup get together. We can do all our makeup step by step, like playing and makeup with others. That would be so cool. Listen, y'all can see this mug underneath this beat. Okay. <laughs> that would be so cool. But let's let's get to um. Let me answer your question, Melissa. Um, what eyelashes do I use? Let me tell you something. If you guys can find 
here's the thing. I know what eyelashes I like. I just, for whatever reason, have a hard time paying a lot of money money for eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the ones, it's like sometimes $20. Ooh. And I'm like, here, let me look. But I'll, there's a one that I really like um, that I could share with you guys. And they're from, gosh, I definitely have a shape that I favor. And as soon as I see it, I know what it is. And um, dang, I can't remember what the name of the company, Coco Lashes. So Coco Lashes, that's the name of the company. And I like Risqué. Uh, and I also like Misha. Those are the two. I like wispy. I like, you know, shorter in here, bigger in here, and then shorter in there. Um, and that's just the type of look that I like. I, you know, I like a little bit of length, but not like. Not like touching your brow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like no if I can stick. feel it up here, like. My wedding day, which of course your wedding day, you're supposed to do the most, but my wedding day, I, I kept feeling my lash up here and it was so weird. That sensation was so weird because I never wear lashes that, that big, you know, mm -hmm. I have big eyes, so I know I can carry lashes. Um, so I don't mind wearing like big lashes, but even I have like a limit, you know what I mean? But I like things that are like wispy, that sort of like fan out. Um, that are like natural-ish, but glam, if that makes sense. So that's the type of lash that I gravitate to. It's so funny. I can't do a false la eyelashes. My eyelashes, my natural eyelashes are so curly. And I have, so two things. My natural eyelashes are so curly. They curl in on the lashes. So you know how most people are trying to put like mascara to blend their natural lashes with the lash? My eyelashes on the inside. Like, mm. <laughs> it's going through. And... I just do not have the skill to put the lashes on my eye. Okay, I tried the I tried the regular ones. Okay, I tried the magnetic ones. Okay, because my eyes. I mean, I don't have. I don't feel like I have big or small eyes. I feel like I just kind of have medium sized eyes, but it don't. I feel like I be looking hot, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't smoke anything or do anything. And I was like, you know what, Emily, you just that's just not your ministry. And so I'll be seeing people with the, I'll be seeing the lash girls and I'll be like, they so pretty <laughs> on some lashes. But I will say from a mascara standpoint, some, there are certain mascaras that when I wear them, people think I have on falsies. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So Ooh, we forgot about mascara. That's so, okay. Yeah. We'll get there. Um, I'm going to have to get up and go get it. <laughs> what I was going to say about lashes though, lashes. You, yeah. Just go ahead and get it while I, while I rant about lashes real quick. Lashes to me just elevate a look. To me, you just take it to the next level. Once you throw on that lash, it's like, who is she? So when I really want to do something, uh, when I really want to stunt, when I really want to just take my looks to the next level, whether it's, you know, date night, usually date night or whatever, um, or sometimes on a regular date when I'm going to work, I will throw on some lashes um yeah for you know sure. what i love about this particular live stream is that i can finally powder my nose on camera like normally i look over to the side <laughs> and it's not a thing right it is not a thing okay speaking and there's no powder of, on this i'm just just tap tap of. tapping okay take some of the shine off they do let me do that too since since i can so well i'm gonna let you do that while because i have several blushes palettes so i'm so gonna want to go first I'm just going to show my, the, I'm going to show one blush palette that I uh, really, really like. And then I'm just going to show you guys one blush color that I tend to really gravitate toward. Mm -hmm. And um, hold on, since you have me out here, so that this light don't have me out here looking crazy. I so see the, refresh the face. I didn't even put powder on. I just used my brush. Probably because it's dirty, but... This is like one of those Max Stipple brush, brushes from back in the day. I've had this one, Oop, had this one for a long time. I brushes, but... 
So the palette here is by Juvia's Place. Mm. And it is the Saharan Blush Palette Volume 1. <laughs> and there she is. There she is. I really, really like this one. I... Yeah, to me, it's a good one-stop shop. You got your pink, you got your terracotta, like warm brown color. You have your highlights. I actually can use these for highlights, especially this one over here. I actually like to contour with this every once in a while. Even despite its sort of purple base to it, it still looks really good as like a contour color mm -hmm. for me. So if I'm going somewhere... And I don't want to bring a lot of singles because unlike the rest of my collection, I do have a lot of single blushes, mostly mm -hmm. from NARS. And so this is the only blush palette, one of two blush palettes that I have right now. And so I really, really, really like this. Here's the thing, girl. Let me tell you something. I've lived that life. I rather find things that I absolutely love and I use than have a bunch of things like, you know what I'm saying? Sitting around. So that's how, so I'm the opposite. I love my, like my blush palette. I do use my single blushes. I'd be like, Oh, I forgot about you. Um, so I'm the, we're the same, but the mm. opposite, like I, and plus I like to cocktail my blushes, but that's because it's my favorite step. Hmm. So, yeah, yeah okay, I'm, so not, I'm not a cocktailer at all. The only thing that I have cocktailed a lot in the past are mascaras, actually. But okay. now I've gotten to the point where I have find single, I found single ones that I really like. So I don't even cocktail those anymore. Like, it's just weird. Like, anyway, and I think, you know why I don't? It's because I like to preserve the integrity of the product and whoever created it for whatever reason they create it. So like for me, even for foundations, if I have a, a day occasionally where I do want the fresh hydrated on purpose look mm -hmm. and I'm only going to need it for two hours, I'll whip out the hourglass, you know, whatever this thing is called hourglass. Help me out, girl. Vanish. Stick Manistry. foundation. Yeah, I'll whip this out and I'll put it on, but I'm not going to add moisturizer to my Estee Lauder. I won't do yep. it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm just, but then I've met people like Siki. I don't know if you watch her. Siki is an avid like mixer. She'll do a review on this and she's like, I'm just going to mix a little Estee Lauder. I'm like, no, I don't. Then I don't know how this works. <laughs> I the views that make sense <laughs> but for my everyday life but to me I think it's because it's like cooking so to mm. me these are my different spices and so some days yes I want a straightforward flavor flavor profile and then some days I want the people to be like what is that mm. Girl, it's a mix it's, it's a, a little something I put together I got that yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. um so yes the one blush that I want to share with you guys like I said I have a lot of singles and most of them are NARS. I also tend to gravitate toward this color. I do need to like, when I see a blush and I'm like, ooh, it's probably something like this. And it's like a berry color mm -hmm. with just a tad bit of sheen in it. And mm -hmm. so this color is called Seduction by NARS. And that's what that's it is. Crazy. It's going to look matte here, but it has a sheen, not glitter. Sheen, right? And um, I'm like glitter. I, I have it on, but I don't know if y'all can see that I have it on. But yeah, it's just a pretty berry color. I have some from Lancome, some from Estee Lauder, some um, do I have? I think I threw away my Mac ones, but mostly from Nars, Lancome, and Estee Lauder. And I have three that look just like this. And I'm like, oh, Patricia. You did it again. You bought the same thing over again. <laughs> and because this berry color to me, is just translates well day to night and for whatever shadow I have going on for the most part, mm -hmm. which sometimes if I have like a green or a blue, I might be concerned about what I'm putting on my cheeks. But mm -hmm. I find with this type of color, I'm not, I don't have to be concerned. Gotcha. You know? Y'all gonna have to give me three minutes to get to this. Right? Because it's my favorite step. 
is my like it's my favorite step. It's my favorite step. It's my favorite step. It's my favorite step. So since Patricia was talking about NARS, I think I love NARS blushes. I don't have any NARS singles. No, that's not true. I have a mini NARS blush in Orgasm, but I use it as a highlight. But, like, I don't really wear a highlight, so we can talk about that when we get there. So I'm going to start with the NARS, NARS, um, what is this, the Wanted 2 palette. This is right up my alley from a color story standpoint. Um, this is... I love this palette. This this is something I would travel with, right? Because it's giving me the berry. This kind of corally color right here, you know how you gravitate towards plums? I have this blush color in, in multiple palettes, as you're going to see. I have it in lip gloss. I have it in lipstick. I have it in transition colors. This kind of corally. On my skin, that kind of neutral, warm, this is it. So love this palette. Believe it or not, I can wear everything in here. Now, these two function more like highlights on me, but I saw somebody recently where they were like, they put the highlight on first and then put the blush on top. Love. Mm. Okay, that's that. Something surprisingly that I love that I have on today is this is the Sephora Spice Market palette, I believe. This is satin red I don't know if y'all can see it because I powdered over it and this orange right here baby this color right here reminds me of max um mac what's the really popular brown shimmery sweetest cocoa it reminds me of that love this I know y'all can see the it's Patricia's like you don't hurt them get these, these blushes <laughs> I'm free my two newest babies that I the finish, like, so when, I feel like when it comes to people's favorite makeup products, like you were talking about with complexion, it's not just the color, sometimes it's the finish on the skin, right? And so because I'm a blush lover, I can tell you right now, you know, because you, you you do NARS, mm -hmm. and I love this, and I think the finish is beautiful. The finish that I'm about to show you on these two blush palettes is like butter, Okay. Not very popular in the makeup space, but this is from a brand called Suku. It's a Japanese brand. Like, literally on the back, some of the writing is in um, non-English letters. But this is the first one. This is their one-on-one -on -one palette. It's, it's, I love it. This is the one-on-one, -on -one, and then this is the one-on-two. Oop, I'm losing the little thing. So remember I told y'all that kind of corally and terracotta? It's going to be in every palette for me. And then I just have two more and I'm done. Okay. But I love blush. All right. My last two, I wouldn't really call these palettes. They're just massive blushes. And they're from Wayne Goss. There's that color again. This, first of all, why, does it, why is it so big? I don't, I don't even understand. It's gorgeous. I will never not have it. There's a highlighter on this side, which I do like. I'm just not a big highlighter fan. And the last one is this. This looks scary, but it's not this intense on the face. It's a beautiful berry color. <sighs> I love blush. Okay, I'm done. But I, I, and that's not even all my blush palettes. I got the Juvia's Place in there. I got an old school one. I got one coming in the mail from Profusion, you know, and then I'm done. Yeah, yeah, okay. Miss <laughs> Carter seventy eight says I'm old school. Raisin from Mac is still my favorite brush. Let me tell you something. I have love for Mac raisin. I don't currently yeah, I do. have it because that little plastic part fell out and once that happens I'm like okay I can't afford right. for this to be all over my stuff but I, I love me some raisin matter of fact in the Juvia's Place that palette that dark color is like um raisin's like darker cousin mm -hmm. like that's really what it is so if you like raisin you will like that and to be honest and I think that's why I gravitate toward those plums because though raisin's not quite a plum a few shades darker than that it does give that element to it and that's how I used raisin I could wear it with any 
anything. look, any anything. Mm-hmm. Anything. Um, yes. Also, Shantae asks, uh, what do you use to clean your brushes? Dang, I could probably go get it, but um, I, I use, a bar. use a bar soap. I use and, and the brush clean cleaner from Ulta, Ulta Beauty. Their, um, you know, their be- their own beauty line or whatever. And a lot of times they have sales on them, so I'll buy like four or five at a time. And I like it. It's simple. It's like a little bar thing. And you just run it under the water and then you just swirl it in there, run it under the water again, rinse it off and then move on. So I don't know. Yeah. I use shampoo or a really sensitive bar soap. Like I'm probably so bad, but that's also because I don't have really expensive brushes. So I should, I should wash mine a lot more often than I do. I just, I have my favorite ones, and then when they're dirty, I just use my not as favorite ones. <laughs> and then when those are dirty, dirty play. Okay, then I play. wash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad, but I just, um, even though it don't look like it right now, um, but I just washed like all of them. Actually, a few of these are still clean. I haven't like touched them yet, but I was just washed wash. like all my brushes recently. To wash these. And I recently like switched out all my brushes, so I don't really only have two brands right now. I have a uh, a brush set from Sephora, which is fine. That's probably my second favorite. And these are just BK Beauty brushes. Like I don't have any. I mean, besides the hourglass, I don't have anything crazy expensive. Um, when it comes to brushes, although because I watch these two particular YouTubers who are really into um natural hair brushes. I'm like y'all, like, y'all not about to suck me into the natural hairbrush situation. One, I I use cream foundation, and so you with natural hairbrushes, you can't really wash them as often, and they soak because they are natural hair. They soak up a lot of liquid, and so um, I'm still on the hunt for like my favorite foundation brush. I don't know if anybody makes it because I can't find one. But yeah, I just use BK Beauty right now and Sephora, but like. The Chikahoro and the Sonya G and the all them people. For me, I just use I use a I still have like a large a wide array. I think the thing that I have the most of is Real Techniques because mm-hmm. I actually really like, especially their bigger face brushes. Ooh. Um, let's see. This is Real Techniques. This is Real Techniques. <laughs> Sorry, it's my blush one. This is, obviously has blush on it. This is Real yeah. Techniques. I also have some of their smaller eye brushes. I really do like. And then second, I will say is Sonia Kashuk. I really like Sonia Kashuk. I think her brushes are really um, reasonable. I like and her stuff. And they're just really soft. I just find that they're really soft. And um, so, yeah. And then also, funny enough, NYX also has a, a really nice brushes as well. Surprisingly, I got a full set for free after um, going to a party that they had invited me to. And I actually really, really, really like these. On the mm-hmm. high end, or uh, these are not even really, well, that's relative. But I do have some MAC ones that I use as well and those are cool I just don't find that they're that much better than the other things that I use and I have some elf mixed in there the flat shader brushes from elf yeah the elf small paper brush mm-hmm. is my favorite blush brush I don't know what it is and maybe blame Emily Noel I had this before she, before I started watching her and I agree with her if I just don't, if I'm in a rush, I'm using this brush and it's just, I can just go. Um, I used to have Mac brushes for a long time. And like, like you said, they were okay. Like I kept one or two when I threw them out. This is also L, one of my favorite crease brushes. Um, surprisingly, and I got these with a profusion palette. I have, where are they? I have some profusion brushes. Mm-hmm. Great little blenders, but I would say right now my favorite style of brush, like for my eye, is this like tapered. Move it over just a bit because I can't see it in ecam. Yeah, there we go. Okay, mm-hmm. it's like it's dirty, y'all. Forgive me. It's this tapered style brush, and this is the BK Beauty 
202. Um, but like I said, this is kind of my favorite swirl around. But my favorite for powder foundation, this big baby right here. She's huge. This is the BK Beauty 106. Like, look how big it is on my face. Mm -hmm. I love it. Or, like, or if I've gone too ham on the blush, because that happens, I can just correct it with that. that Uh, Yes. Let's see. Um, LOL Evelyn, same here. I recently tried putting on the magnetic lashes, and it was a complete fail. Even the magnetic ones, I can't. Miss Carter 78 says, I use the Dona Lace brushes and Real Techniques. I still have a lot of my Sedona Lace brushes. They sent it to me, these to me. It's funny. Out of everything, I probably have I've been sent brushes probably the most. That's probably the thing that I buy the least. So they sent me a complete set, and I still use these. And when I tell you, girl, these are Alabama old, okay? <laughs> That's how old these are like back when I was really doing beauty videos and I just washed this one and there's still all of them are still kicking so yes but let's talk about um we're going to touch on skin but we have to talk about highlighter mascara yes and then we'll get to skin so let's touch on um highlighter I so I'm not a huge, I wear highlighter. I do, but mm-hmm. it's not my thing to me. Highlighters, highlighters, highlighter. Um, right. there's bold highlighter, highlighter, and then there is soft highlighter. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of how I feel about it. Even though I know some people love the highlighter, but to me, but I will say one that I really, really like two that I really, really like, <laughs> I will say what. Uh, is this one by Laura Geller and it's her baked gelato swirl illuminator in ballerina. Mm. It's old y'all. I'm sorry, but it's so pretty. And um, then this one by Ofra and Rodeo drive. I absolutely love to me. This is more pinky. This one's a little bit more golden and they just give me life. I don't, you guys won't be able to really, really see it, but I have the Rodea Drive on very lightly. And that's pretty much it. Again, I rather get a highlighter that gives me punch and dial back than getting one that's like a faint soft. and then, or soft and then build it up. Mm-hmm. But that's just, that's how, I just want to get more for my money. That's just how I feel about it. How about you? You said, do you, ha- do you wear, do you have, I saw those ones in the Wayne Goss pop palette. Palette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's some in the Suku palettes. I will say this. If you, I would not go buy a highlighter. Right. So I'm because, because for whatever reason, I guess when highlighters became popular, I saw people abusing them. It like totally turned me off from the trend. Mm-hmm. I was like, every, like inner corner, nose, forehead, brow bone, Cupid's bow chin that people were doing too much. Um, but I prefer, I would much prefer a glowy blush, like a shimmery blush, not a glittery blush over a highlight. Now, if I do a highlight, it's literally going to be either a lighter shimmery blush or sweetest cocoa by Mac, which is a blush, but on me is a very natural looking highlight. So I use it. It's the exact same color as my skin, except for it's shimmery. Mm. And so for me, I like highlights that look like my skin is just shimmering. Mm. And so because of that, not there's not a lot of colors. Nobody's making highlight this dark brown that's shimmery unless it's a blush. So um, rarely will you catch me in a highlight. And to your point, if I do, it's so subtle to me that's what highlight is. It's like, I'm putting this thing on that as my face moves, you're like, oh, that's pretty, but you don't see like a streak of highlight. But you're right. I also want to just be able to put a little bit on and then it'd be done. I don't want to have to pile Mm -hmm. because I feel like highlight, if you pile it, can look a little makeup-y. I know that sounds weird, but you know what I'm talking about. It can look not cakey because it's not that thick, but it can look like 
you just um and so i'll be mad when i see people's like contour blush and highlight i'd be like this is not an ice cream sandwich sis i'm gonna mm. need you to blush um but yeah surprisingly as much as i love blush i'm just not a big highlight fan but when i see people do it well i'd be like yeah but then on top of that because my face is so oily if I have highlight on and then my face gets oily, it starts looking like I done went to the gas station and just put straight motor oil <laughs> on my cheek. So that's that. Yeah. That's, I really don't have a highlight. So sweet as cocoa. And I'm like, y'all have seen sweet as cocoa. And it, I'm like hit pan. Like it's bad. Like I, I'm, I'm in that thing if I use it. Let me make sure I haven't missed um, any yeah. questions. So... Mask, mascara. I just have two. I'll share. I'll, I'll share two, but it's really just. It's really just one. Now, um, L'Oreal's Voluminous Lash Paradise. Okay, if you're familiar with Too Faces Better Than Sex mascara, um and you don't like paying the $22, then hit this up. I, I mean, the same color tube and everything, y'all. This is my go-to uh, mascara every day. Volume length, you get both of them out of this. I actually like the, the brush that's on there. And when I use this, I, don't, I only have to use one mascara, not two. If mm -hmm. I'm having a moment, a day, an experience, or I have some laying around, I will use the Monsieur Big Lump from Lancome. I that really, really love this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that mascara is bomb. Okay, yes. go ahead. I used, to, I used to buy this and have backups to it. But when I found uh, Too Faced, which is slightly cheaper than this, I went for that. And then I found a dupe of the Too Faced. So that's why I buy this. But occasionally, if I buy from Sephora or from the counter at Macy's or Nordstrom, they will give you one of these big travels of these um, Moisture Bigs. And I always just collect <laughs> and put in my, like, my travel makeup bag because I absolutely love, 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 love this. But... I'll spend $100 on foundation, but mascara is one of those places where, again, I feel like I can cut mm -hmm. um, corners, so that's why I, I use the L'Oreal one, and, and honestly, it's not that affordable for the drugstore, but it's way right. cheaper than the um, Too Faced that you'll get, and cheaper than this, so uh, if you like Lancome as a brand, like I do in general, then hit definitely try that up. But um, if you're looking for, for something from the drugstore to give you length and to give you body volume and also color, I just feel like it's a very pigmented black. Mm -hmm. Then you use the, the it was a voluminous lash paradise by um, L'Oreal. Yeah, L'Oreal Paris. Yes. I love it. And it's so funny because, because Patricia put me onto that mascara. I haven't gotten it yet because... I keep things on backup. I mean, I think <laughs> most makeup lovers on certain products keep things on backup. But, okay, my, my drugstore pick for mascara, which this is, like, if I'm picking a, a mascara and I don't want to spend a lot of money on it, I'm doing Maybelline's The Falsies, mm -hmm. um, the Volume Express ones. So they have a couple of different types of falsies. I'm doing the purple and the, and the blue one. Love, love, love this mascara. And... I like the curved wand because, you know, while most people are trying to push their lashes up, I'm trying to comb mine down so you can see them because they're curled mm -hmm. up in them. But I love this. It helps kind of stretch out my lashes. It lengthens them. It spreads them out. And when I wear this right, people do ask me if I have on false lashes. So I, I love this. Now, this is Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, but let me tell you why. This tube and the two that I have on backup will be probably my last one. It's because what Patricia just said, she told me about the Lash Paradise. I got two full size of the Better Than Sex Mascara at Ross. 
So I didn't pay full price. I paid like 60% off. And I was like, wait a minute, y'all got better than sex up in here? I grabbed, promptly grabbed two. And they're my backup. But I was like, let me use my little mini one first. Um, the only reason why I have two is because the wand on this, let me show the wand on this, is not tapered at the Lord, I'm such a bad beauty blogger. It's not tapered at the end. And because of the way my eye is shaped, getting to my bottom lashes with this is challenging for me. Whereas with this one, let me show you all this curved tube that I was talking about. Like it's curved and tapered. So I can get right in there with the tip, which I like to do. I like to like deposit mascara on first and then come through and, and comb. So that's it. I mean, I we were talking about, I think we were talking about like the Pat McGrath mascara and somebody else's mascara. We was like, I, you're not about to get me on $30 some dollars <laughs> for a mascara, huh, fam? Like you're not going to do it. But that Lancome, I got that as a sample once. And I remember every time I wore it on Instagram, people were like, what lashes are you wearing? And I'd be like, mm -hmm. it's Lancome. And I just, in my mind though, I will spend on certain things. Y'all see, we both got a mix. You're just not going to do me on mascara. Yeah. I just, not when Ross is selling Too Faced better than sex for my <laughs> clothes. I like, I'm, I, yeah, you know. So. Right. I, I agree. Mascara is not the place. My brows are also not the place. Not the place. But for eyeshadow, foundation. for lipstick and foundation, I will. I will do it. Yes. Um, so I think we can go to skin now. Oh, did I grab skin? And I just have one thing to really share because nothing that I have. I mean, y'all, with the skin, I'm pretty much... Um, I'm low maintenance on yeah, the skin. Yeah, low maintenance on the skin. I don't use a bunch of things. I really don't. But this is new. That's kind of why I want to share it and actually kind of see a difference that I like. Ooh. So, which is hard with skin, especially if you haven't used it for like more than a month, you know? So the one that I, the thing I want to share, I think this is all, Yeah. The thing I want to share is by Pharmacy, mm. and it's called Honeymoon Glow, and it's an uh, AHA resurfacing night cream, and and so I use this um, at night, and I find that my skin looks a lot more just even texturally, and I really, really like it. So this is what... Um, it looks like, and it's called a serum, but really it's like a cream. Hold on. Let me just use a little because y'all, this is not cheap. Um, <laughs> Rub it into your hands. Rub it into your hands. Right. It's not um, like an oil, but it's right. like a light cream that you put on. It smells like lemon, like a lemon citrus smell. And I actually like what it's been doing to my skin. I bought this like in a little set to try. Like it, this is a smaller version, by the way. It's big, but this is the smaller version. And um, it came with a mask, which I haven't used yet. And another moisturizer, like a daytime moisturizer that I have not used yet. Mm -hmm. But this is what I have used. And I really like what it's been doing for my skin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm so like simple on skin. It's funny because, you know, when people, I think when they look at our skin, they're like, what's your skincare routine? What's your skincare routine? And I'm just like, out of where I spend the money, that's probably not the place. It's just that my routine is so lock solid. But the one thing I use that I do when I change, like I can change my moisturizer, I can change my cleanser ad nauseum and I don't see a difference the one thing that if I change I do notice a difference is my toner and I didn't grab it so look, hold please I'm gonna grab it I've been up and down this whole time and it's not even expensive um y'all have seen this this is not some revolutionary product it is the heritage stone 
rose water facial toner with um, hyaluronic acid, whatever. I, and I here's the thing. I've been using this before hyaluronic acid was a buzzword. So, um, I mean, I've used this for years or witch hazel. But this or witch hazel, if I veer out of those two buckets, I will see a difference in my skin. I use this twice a day because I wash my face twice a day. Um, I, I think it's like, what, 10, 11 bucks a bottle? You can get it on Amazon. Sometimes I find it in, like, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, places like that. Yeah. I got two on backup. Um, and that's it. So, I mean, I change my... I like to play around with cleansers and moisturizers, depending on what I find. Like, recently, I found... I think it's called Pronounced Ola Hendrickson or Ole Hendrickson. Mm -hmm. I found them on sale at TJ Maxx. So I picked up the whole line. They had a cleanser, uh, two moisturizers, a scrub, and an eye cream. I picked up the whole line. My skin likes it, but, like, I've also used Shea Moisture. I've also used um, Aveeno, and I get similar results. Mm -hmm. So um, I've even been playing with Glow Recipe recently. I mean, I like it. My skin likes it. I just, that wash tone... Moisturize, maybe a serum. If I just stick to that, my skin is like, thank you. But it don't play about what I'm talking about. <laughs> Rose water. She'd be like, I no. Patricia, do you use a setting spray? Yeah. Yes, I do. But um the one that I like I'm currently out of. So I am using right now until it's finished is the NYX matte finish. Mm -hmm. Oh, I used to love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I really like the um, Urban Decay, um, the overnight one. Mm -hmm. All nighter, sorry. Overnight, yeah. all nighter. Mm -hmm. that's the one that I really like but sometimes I find myself skipping a step I will say in the warmer months mm -hmm. um, or sometimes I'll just use actually plain old raise, uh, rose water mm. it's uh, let me now I'm gonna go get it hold on So this I got from, I'll say Marshalls, and it's just like from a company called Pearl Essence, and it's rose water, mm -hmm. and um, it's basically water, glycerin, uh, rose water, beet root powder, a bunch of like natural stuff, and so it's just one of those sprays that's supposed to be hydrating with or without makeup, you know, um, and just to keep calm, balance, skin or whatnot. And so sometimes in the winter, I will use this instead of using something like All Nighter or the the, fin the, the matte finish one from um, NYX. Because as you know, I use the Becca primer right. underneath. And so sometimes I don't need all of that snatch. You know what I mean? Right. So sometimes I can just do a little bit of spray just to kind of blend, mesh everything together. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. That's for yeah. winter time. In the summertime, I'll do all that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. Like I don't, I don't use any kind of spray in the winter. In the summer in Texas, um, I'm using, and I think you put me onto this, the Urban Decay D Slick. Yes. Because when it's a hundred, legit, one hundred and ten degrees um, in Texas, you literally can walk out the door and you will start sweating your makeup off. But I don't use setting sprays the way most people do, so I don't do the finishing step because I I like to look matte. Some people just want use matte because they want the same power. I like to look matte. So what I do is I will spray my foundation brush with my setting spray and then put my foundation dots on top of it and mix it in to set it and then finish with powder. Mm, um, okay. My, and when I, any kind of setting 
spray, you know, which they're supposed to, they kind of take that, that freshly done makeup look off your face. Mm -hmm. I like that look. I like that fresh powdered down because I know in T minus three hours, (laughs) it's going to have a very natural finish. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't need the extra help, but I do need the extra stain powder. But like, and then also in the winter, I don't use any kind of setting spray, uh, setting spray on my brush. Um, because like you said, I got the matte primer, I got the matte foundation, I got the matte powder. Um, the only exception is if it's raining. I don't know what it is about humidity that will snatch oil out of my face so fast. Mm. I need Becca, I need D Slick, I need it all. If it if it's slightly warm, I'm talking like over 60 degrees and it's raining, the oil is squeezing out of my face. That's interesting. I haven't noticed that. I'd have to, I'd have to pay attention to see to see if that would happen to me. I feel the urge to spray this, y'all. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> Whew, that's a strong nozzle. Listen, we wouldn't be beauty influencers for a day if somebody didn't lean their head back and spray. <laughs> I needed that, and it smells good. Yeah, it does. That rose water smells good. Look, y'all. That's it. That's what we got for you guys. Let's see. Um, yeah, it's it's been a minute. That it's been a minute. Now you know all of our secrets and everything. No, no, we also don't do beauty content no more. <laughs> right. So like, but it would listening. you all it would be nice to do some sort of like um a Zoom get ready with me with a few of you all. I'll probably have to um see how we can make that happen. That sounds like a really good idea. But um thank you all for tuning in. Yes. Um, is- and joining us for this uh, much lighter <laughs> girl chat. Because <laughs> yes. y'all know they'd be so deep, they'd be so hype. Um, but yeah, this was fun. I definitely would like to do something um, like this again here soon, Evelyn. I really, I really enjoy this. I really this, no, this was fun. We had talked about this for a while, and y'all. So here's the thing: like Patricia said, not as deep, and we also do this privately, like. One of us would get something in the mail and we'd be like, I need a hall, a private hall. Uh, and we will sit and like, we didn't do any swatches today because we've been on, on here for five hours, but we will swatch for each other. We would <laughs> change lipstick colors. We would do all the things. So uh, we don't always live in the ocean floor. Mm-hmm. No, I think this would be fun. Um, and plus, it's just interesting. Sometimes you don't even know what your friends do. Like, I didn't know that Patricia was a brows first kind of person. <laughs> and so I'm having to reevaluate our friendship at this point. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know you anymore after all these years. Your brows first. Yeah. No, but, you know, it's nice to hear what products other people like, you know. And I think that's why I still do watch and not a lot of beauty content, but some beauty content, because I'm amazed that there, there's products or brands that people use that I've never heard of. Right. Or that I don't encounter all the time. I mean, obviously there's like the popular brands, but yeah. 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 I love this it. Was- I love it. Thanks. Miss Liberian lady. She says, hi ladies. Bye ladies. I missed it. <laughs> Congratulations. God's design. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you guys have been great and this was fun and hopefully we get a chance to do it soon. Now, I don't know when the next one is going to be on. I don't either because somebody <laughs> preoccupied. <laughs> That's how we, we, we'll say that. But hopefully, well, Ellen and I will talk about that offline, but we will let you guys know. We will let you guys know. Just, but if y'all seen Patricia's video, then y'all know <laughs> what's going on with my life what's right now. <laughs> so. so yeah, but yeah, just follow us on Instagram and we we try to give y'all a heads up if we know on Instagram or um on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. We'll try to do something at least thirty minutes <laughs> before I let you guys know what's going on. So we be trying. We do. We do. But yes, y'all, thank you so much for tuning in to another Girl Chat Live. And we will see you guys soon. You guys have a good week. Stay healthy. Y'all stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Socially distance. All that good stuff. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.